That is the car Boner drove in high school. That's what I'm on his whole collection. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's Christine, okay? We are up in Baileyville, Kansas today, checking out the Mopar and John Deere collection. There's backhoe tractor, David Brown bucket tractor, and then some really nice, well-preserved cars. He had some B-bodies. His particular love was the 68 Fury C-body cars. So we'll take a look around at everything here. He was trained as a John Deere mechanic and worked in a dealership for a while. Then he struck out on his own and had the nice big repair shop building. Worked on tractors and collected Mopars for a hobby. Nice old 4020 tricycle tractor there. Some other farm equipment. Unfortunately, he died of Alzheimer's in his early 60s, so really unfortunate, untimely death of a guy who was very well regarded and liked and loved in this area. So let's walk around the collection and then I'll show you the auction action. 1970 Coronet convertible, beautiful survivor, completely original car, original paint, interior, very original to under the hood, down to all the factory parts. 318 car, which pretty decent cruiser. Not every convertible needs to necessarily be muscle pavement pounder. Very, very well kept car. Very original. Just pretty exceptional to find one like this. More than likely, whoever bought this knew they may not have necessarily intended to preserve it, but it definitely wasn't their primary driver car. This was probably the fair weather summer car. And Places where it's real snowy, that goes a long way to preserving one if they're not driven in the winter. Then 68 Fury Convertible. This one's a bit of a resto mod, you'd call it. This is probably 20 year old build on it. So, unfortunately, a lot of the work that they've done is really dated. Wheels and tires you can change, but this interior, you'd either have a lot to redo here or you'd just have to like it and live with it. Definitely not to my taste, but somebody that's wanting a classic car just to drive around use and have fun with this would be pretty good entry-level starter car and something that you wouldn't have to do all the work to because it's already been done said so this one starts great runs great just very reliable dependable cruising car And this is kind of the star of the show, 58 Plymouth Belvedere, two-door hardtop. And this one has gotten a 392 Hemi transplant. Plymouth would have just had a regular V8 engine. Black, I believe, is the original factory color to this car but it has been repainted has kind of a survivor original look but there has been 
a lot of work done to this car and a lot of changes made to it. If it was original factory black car, I'd really like to leave it that way if it were mine, but obviously every 58 Belvedere two-door hardtop is kind of going to have the same crowd of guys looking at it for pretty typical red and white build. They do have a lot of options on this car power windows power steering he did collect quite a number of extra parts for it got reupholstered seats there's a lot of guys building 57s and other 58s that are cloned to Belvedere's but this is a car that it's all 58 Belvedere original some rust in that trunk floor realistically it'd be a cool driver as is but to really bring this car to where it needs to be it pretty much would need to be totally blown apart although a lot of the hard work's been done very little reproed for these cars so to have everything collected and here with it all the extra parts and to have it something with a running engine that's very desirable and not just your average junkyard car or pasture car tree row car this one i do feel like is gonna bring strong interest and strong bidding from the crowd when it sells here today very desirable car a lot of people looking for these a lot of people wanting them and just not something that changes hands very often not very frequently that one of these comes to market especially with everything that it's got with it 68 new yorker this one's black. I'm not sure what level of work he would have done on these cars himself and what things he would have had other people or shops do. Some guys do it all. Mechanical, body, paint. Some guys are more into the cosmetic and some guys are into more of the grease and grime of mechanical parts easy tip off that it's a 68 is the little square side marker lights Plymouth had round ones New Yorker had just a little more plusher interior and just a little more glitzy trim than the Newport you could get a New Yorker as a four-door post like this, or as a four-door hardtop. I used to have a 67 Newport four-door hardtop, real, real similar to this. It was one that I let go, and unfortunately it got derbied. This car's pretty well kept. Not sure that that top color is original. They did it kind of to match the interior. Cool old travel stickers on it. Does have the road wheels. For some reason to me, these are real similar to like a 67 Oldsmobile 98. They just kind of almost mimic the look. And this is another identical 68 New Yorker four-door post. This one's had kind of a velour upholstery shop interior done in it. Not the original fabric. Don't think this is the original shade of blue either. More of a modern shade. This one does have power windows. 
These cars, you can just look at them and see the passion that he had for taking care of them and preserving them, keeping them up, even if they're not all the way back to assembly line stock spec. They are very well preserved and very well maintained. He took care of a lot of things very well. Customers tractors and his own vehicles here in his collection. Very, very nice original paint on the trunk floor. You see inside the lid there the original shade of blue from the factory. Here's the 68 Coronet 500 convertible. You can see those round side marker lights I was talking about. This car pretty much needs complete restoration. I think it had a early 70s 400 engine in it. Not original, but this one did kind of run and move around. Although it's going to just need to be taken all the way down and get the bodywork and rust repair and restoration for its really a usable car again. Bucket seat interior. This yellow color, it's not for everybody. I used to not be crazy over it but I'm kind of getting to like it a little more, especially with a black top or on your hard top cars with a black vinyl top. It really sets it off. Everybody had a version of this color in the 60s. Ford, AMC, Chevrolet, Mopar. So it was just a pretty popular shade on the palette. This old Lincoln was a shop project that he did with one of his friends. Kind of one of those you only live once type of things. And 383 Chrysler engine in there. I don't think he actually drove this car. I think they had a ladies powder puff derby that he built it for. This old New Yorker. Kind of a shady history on it. 30,000 mile car, sat in a barn, very mousy inside, nice on the outside but rough inside. I hope this one escapes the derby because it really is too nice to die. That thing should stay alive and be on the road again. Old 75 Dart, very similar to my grandpa's car. Lots and lots of these 68 Furies. This is a vintage wreck. You just look around this place and kind of get the idea that any 68 Fury that came available, he bought. This would be a 1988 to 93 New Yorker. Still considered a C-body, but front-wheel drive car. These were real similar to the Dodge Dynasty. Caravan's a bit of an oddball. This one is a four-cylinder turbo. And it's a conversion van. Most of your conversion vans were full-size almost never ever see one of these Bowen's buggies never even heard of that conversion company just a real oddball relic van half of a 70 Roadrunner I believe and this is another rare one, 68 Fury 1 police car. That should be a 383 in there. 
really really neat car got all your police details unfortunately very very rusty car rockers are bad quarters are bad I really like this car it would take quite a lot to really bring this thing back just a shame because it's all original paint see the big alternator there that was a police detail for running electrical equipment light bar siren had your extra capacity radiator amazingly manual brakes take a look on these fender tags and they have call outs for all the special police equipment neat neat car rubber floors instead of carpet standard vinyl with the standard cloth inserts rubber floors are actually decent and you can see the certified speedometer that was a police car item neat neat car Fury 1 be similar to a Chevy Biscayne they had the Fury 2, the Fury 3, and then the Fury VIP. VIP was like your Caprice or LTD. This is another rare one. 1968 Fury 1. This one is a two-door post police car. Little bit different. It's kind of a almond color. Somebody's repainted it in a brown lacquer that's started to weather off. Tented glass. This one has carpet and the striped upholstery. No certified speedometer. So it just kind of makes you wonder. Was that like a deputy's car or an administrative car? One of these old rigs you wish could tell stories. Then this Ford is a 68 country sedan. Kind of on the rough side, realistically a parts car. Came out of Colorado. That car they swapped a truck engine and a car four speed into. See the four speed on the pallet in front of it there. And we got quite the Comparo here. Right next to it is the 68 Plymouth Fury station wagon. This is a really, really neat car. Just got some rough edges. This one take quite a bit to bring it back. Cool part about it though is that it's a three-speed manual. So it's got the clutch pedals. Manual brake car. That's got the Serta card. These had the original owner's name stamped in them. So you can see that's always been a local car. Right around Marysville here. GM did a version of that they called the Protecto Plate. I'm not aware that Ford ever did. Kind of a neat car. Then 68 Fury four door hardtop. Same color as the wagon. All of these, I mean, they've sat long enough. 
and they're just not that crazy popular of a collector car that realistically they'll be parts salvage hopefully not derby cars but i'm sure some of that crowd will be here unfortunately 67 four-door hardtop 68 new yorker two-door hardtop and a 68 new yorker four-door hardtop low number antique plate on that one that car is real real similar to the old Newport that I had same color and everything factory disc brakes on that those are the dual piston type a lot of good parts on that one if somebody's restoring one 68 two-door hardtop really neat lines on these I know everybody focuses on the muscle cars but all of these 60s Mopars just had their own really neat unique styling to them this one they just pulled out of a barn maybe six months ago pretty decent survivor car except for some old accident damage that's been touched up this one's one of the better cars in the back row but without the drivetrain and with the other parts missing it could go about any way a couple of these 74 through 78 New Yorkers two-door hardtop and a four-door hardtop kinda rusty in the back realistically parts cars these things running and nice struggle to bring in the 4000 range so ones like this that are this beat down see a raccoon totally destroyed the interior in that car Raccoons are very destructive pests. You let them get in anywhere and they'll destroy things in a hurry. Mother Nature's Vandals. Both of these probably have a target painted on them for the derby track, I would guess. A lot of two-door parts on that green car if somebody was building one and needed anything. 1968 Sport Fury, two-door hardtop. Sport Fury would be kind of like a Galaxy GT or an Impala SS. This one's supposed to run pretty good. Somebody's taking the bucket seats out of it for something else. <laughs> oh, just floating along. These cars just don't quite get the love that the B-bodies do. This one's unfortunately got some rust under that vinyl top, some rust in the quarters. So it's hard to say what will happen with this one. Just not a lot of guys looking even for a Sport Fury as a restoration car. And this one... Honestly, would take some good work to bring it back. 68 convertible. Another Sport Fury. That one's got the buddy armrest in the middle. So you could seat three across the front and a pinch. Another, just like a lot of these old cars, could be restored if you really wanted to. But for the amount of work involved, sometimes it's cheaper to buy one done. Here's one that's been attracting quite a lot of attention. This is a 68 Sport Fury convertible. And it has a bit of a rare option on it. And that is the 4-speed manual transmission. 
Not too many of them built that way. Neat car, and it's just still kind of put together enough that it'd be fun to cruise around in it ratty like this for a little while till you restored it. You can see the difference in condition and completeness on this car and that rare four-speed option makes this one kind of a desirable car. I'm not a convertible guy but I like this one. Neat car. Then this car is kind of the one that started it all. This was Bones High School car and he kept it all those years. He didn't really sell or trade much that I'm aware of. See maybe an earlier bench seat out of something else, I'm not sure has the look of a car that was kind of sympathetically refurbished and kept up as it went along and as he drove it. So Bone definitely did have a thing for convertibles throughout his life. Collected them as he went along and there's one more left here that we haven't taken a look at and that is this Plymouth Belvedere 66 or 67 it's got a later probably 318 in it has a good ratty vibe to it kinda gives me Foster Farms chickens vibe if any of you guys remember those old commercials they Drove around in a four-door that was blue and brown and kind of rusty old car. A lot similar to this one. This is a pretty neat car too. B-body, so definitely restoration worthy. As far as market value is concerned. A few neat vintage stickers in the windows. This one does have pretty rare option for a B-body. That is the power windows. Doubt there were too many people that ordered them. I like this car a lot. It's got a good ratty vibe to it. And kind of like that four-speed car. Just enough of it here intact that kind of get it running and cruise it around catch a couple more of the cars here in this last short row 68 fury two-door hardtop unfortunately the glass vandalized out of that one so strictly parts at this point this one is really straight overall and wheel arches and quarters actually half decent in it so a lot of good parts there for somebody working on one of these old rigs then this yellow 68 four-door hardtop this is pretty much the direct sister car to 68 Impala of mine so kind of interesting to Make a little juxtaposition comparison between those two. Very straight, honest, original survivor car. Boys got a lot of extra wings up here in the bucket too. Yeah. 
It's got a 400 engine out of a 72 uh, automatic transmission that does run, showing 98,000 miles. Got a title, got keys, it runs right there, convertible. 67 Plymouth satellite convertible. Uh, it's a, got a 318 motor, automatic transmission. Uh, odometer is not available. Yes, we do have a title and we got keys. Right there. Somebody give me hey, hey, hey. $2,000. 22 and a half. How much are you down? Give me 30, give me 31. More, more. Give me 31. Let me go with those. Give me 31. Give me 31. 31. 31. Now two. Now two. 31. Two. I'm a 31 and 32. What about 32? Two, two, two. He's all done. I'm a 32 and three. I'm a 32 and 33. 100. Give me 32 and 33. What about 33? So with 3,200. Put that on number. I'll put that on number one, two, two, buyer. Pull ahead. This is 68 Plymouth Fury 3 convertible, 318 automatic, 77,000 on the odometer. Uh, yes, we do have a title. Right there it is. That is the car Boner drove in high school. That's what got him started on his whole That's what. I think when it was brand new, he painted them uh, lines on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, right there. Good car, right guy. 2000, 22 and a half, five. I'm a 22 and a half, but it'll go five, it'll go five, it'll go five, it'll go five hundred. I'm a 22 and a half, but it'll go five, it'll go five hundred. I'm a 22 and a half, but it'll go five. I'm 22, 50 now, three. I'm a two and a half, but it'll go three, three, three. What about two and a half, but it'll go three? I'm a 22 and a half, but it'll go three, it'll go 23, four. I'm a 23 and 24, hundred dollar, give me three and four, three and four, 23, hundred dollar, give me 23 and 24, 24, hundred, 24, hundred. I'm always sold at 23 hundred dollars, put them on number five. Go ahead. Convertible 383, four-speed transmission. Ladies and gentlemen, they didn't make a lot of them. Right there, it's got a four-speeder. Yes, we got a title. Uh, no keys, and it does not run. Odometer showing 82,000. We got an extra trunk lid in the back. All right? Right there it is, $2,000, 22 and a half. I'm a 2,000 dollar, give me 27. I'm a 36 and 7, I'm a 7, I'm a 36, 700. I'm a 36, 37, 38. I'm a 37, 3,800 dollar, give me 7, I'm a 8, 7, I'm a 8. I'm a 37, 100 dollar, give me 38, 8, 8, 8. What about 37, 38? 37, 38, 37, 38. Anybody else? 3,800? I sold them 3,700. Okay, we got a 68 Plymouth Sport Fury convertible. It's got a 318 automatic transmission. Uh, yes, we have keys and a title. That car right there, the white one. I think I GM, two and a half, 300. I think it needs two and a half, but it'll go three, it'll go three. What about you, 50, what about you, and a half, it'll go three. What about you, 50, what about you, and a half, it'll go three. 300. Anybody want a car to restore? Three hundred dollars. I'm a two and a half. It'll go three. It'll go three. What about you? Fifty. What about two and a half? It'll go three. What about three? Three. What about two and a half? And three. I sold it two fifty. Put it on two six six. Go ahead. We got a nineteen sixty eight Plymouth Sport Fury two door three eighty three automatic transmission runs out good eighty eight now only eight eight a hundred eight thousand miles. Shut it down. Two door hardtop. There we go. 
had quite an eye for the rare and obscure Mopars, and it was a little tough to pick just one, but 
My choice was the 1968 Plymouth two-door police car. We loaded it up, took it home. I'm researching it as we speak. I don't know just a whole lot about these cars, but a two-door police car, I'm thinking has to be a pretty rare vehicle. If you know anything about these, comment below. Tune in again soon. Next episode here on the channel, we'll show a complete walk around of this 1968 Plymouth Fury 1 two-door police car.